Okay, so welcome everybody on behalf of the State Department of Education and uh, the IMEA, Idaho Music Educators Association. We would like to welcome everyone to today's elementary music educators meeting where we will be viewing samples of elementary music activities that can be used in an online setting. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Rebecca Martin. I'm the um, coordinator for arts and humanities here at the State Department of Education. And it is my hope that you will walk away with some ideas for the fall and that you will feel more comfortable using technology in the classroom. Um, I hope that this can become a platform for learning and if any other teacher would like to share their expertise as we try to navigate towards the fall, please feel free to reach out to me or to Kathy and we can get that arranged, especially if um, after today it's, it's very, um, it proves to be really worthwhile and something that you can incorporate and feel more comfortable for the fall. Um, lastly, I would like to share um, with you the arts resource page that the State Department of Ed developed for educators and for parents. And I will share that in the chat box as soon as we begin the presentation. I would like to introduce Dr. Lori Gray, music education professor from Boise State University, and she will be acting as our facilitator and will monitor the chat box and Zoom features to ensure that all of your questions are answered. Um, at this time, I would like to um, introduce our presenter to you today. Um, Joanne Matabag is an elementary music teacher in the West Ada School District. She currently teaches at Summer Wind Elementary School. She is well versed in educational technology and particularly how it relates to the to the elementary music classroom. She has planned some fun activities today. So without any more from me, I will um, pass it on to Joanne and on behalf of the State Department of Ed, she did this as completely volunteer. So um, I would really like to thank her for her willingness to um, help us. So thank you again so much, Joanne. You are such a great resource. We love it. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Um, thank you everyone for coming this morning. Um, I am new to Boise. I moved back to Boise this August. Um, I used to live here in 2010, where I taught at Lowell Scott Middle School in the West Ada School District. Um, and I'm really passionate about helping teachers of all levels, um, which is why I had approached Kathy and Rebecca about um, possibly sharing some ideas. Um, so, I'm going to start with typing a link in the chat box before I share my screen. Um, if you've never done a word wall before, this is going to be just a quick way of maybe, um, you know, introducing your students and yourself and just creating, it's kind of like an icebreaker. So I'm going to type in the chat box. Um, it's through a website called Menti. So all you have to do is click on that link and then go ahead and I would like you to describe yourself in one word. So. So I'll give you um, a couple minutes to do that while I share my screen. So it should take you to a website that looks like this. So I see some um, words in the chat box. If you can actually click on the menti.com link with the code right after it, it should take you to this website. And if you can type your word in this website, um, it will pull up a word wall that I will share in just a minute. So. All right, 
So um, moving on, I, I'll share that link in just a second, what the word wall results look like. Um, for the Zoom features today, we're going to ask that you stay muted during the presentation just to um, reduce the background noise. Um, at the end, we will have a Q&A session where you can go ahead and um, unmute yourself to ask questions. Um, the chat, we'd like to reserve for uh, sharing resources, but if you would like to ask a question, you can go ahead and type it in the chat box. Um, I'm definitely not the expert in this meeting. There are plenty of other teachers with a lot of knowledge to share, so if um, you want to ask the question in the chat to see if anyone has questions, feel free to do so, um, but just know that we are saving the last 15 minutes for Q&A. Um, if you are not familiar with the Zoom features, I have here some screenshots of some of the buttons that will help you um, change the view on your screen. So the gallery view will show all of the participants in a grid-like manner in your screen. And if you select the speaker view, um, that will show the main speaker who is talking. Um, and that's also how you'll be able to see the share my screen that I'm sharing right now. So that's in the upper right hand corner. At the bottom of your screen, if you hover over with your mouse, you'll see uh, controls to control your sound. Um, so if you need to mute yourself or unmute yourself. Uh, it's up to you if you want to keep your video on, but there's also a video control here. And you can see the participants in the room, the chat box control. If you need closed captioning, that is an option in Zoom that you can control. And then um, if you have questions at the end, you can use the reaction button to raise your hand. So that is on the Zoom platform. As I said, we'll leave um, 15 minutes at the end for Q&A and the next 40 minutes it'll, it will just be presentation. Um, but I will be asking uh, participants to actually, um, we're going to do breakout rooms for a couple of the activities because I think it's important that you actually explore um, some of the things that I'm sharing. So at this time, um, I'm going to have Rebecca share a poll, and it's just kind of getting an idea of where you are at in terms of integrating technology and teaching online. Um, I know I mentioned that I uh, teach general music at Summerwin, um, but I am also an adult ESL teacher for CWI, and I'm creating an online course um, launching in the fall for CWI. And I'm also joining the team at IDLA this year as a part-time online instructor. Um, in addition to my master's in music ed degree, I have um, an ed tech degree from Boise State along with an online uh, endorsement. So, all right. So we can leave that poll up there for another few seconds. It looks like the majority are, some are comfortable and some are uncomfortable. Um, so thank you, that's good information. Um, I want to mention before we go on that um, this is just a snapshot of activities that you can do. So like Rebecca said, I hope it's like um, a starting point where we can continue to share because this is just a very small part of what you can do in the online classroom. So, All right, so the objectives today um, is to share not only my ideas, but like I said, there are plenty of educators out there that I am sure have wonderful ideas and I'm hoping that this can be maybe a weekly thing that we can you know do sharing sessions or um, um, whatever format we can come up with so that we are um, prepared for the fall so that's why there's not just one light bulb there are many light bulbs um, I hope we can come together throughout the state of Idaho to um, continue to collaborate and support each other. Um, second objective is the activities that I'm going to share are not LMS specific. So regardless if you're using Google Classroom, Blackboard, Schoology, Teams, um, I've chosen very 
general things that you can do regardless of what platform you're using. And then the third objective is I'm covering things that are free. Um, at the end of the presentation, I will talk about resources that may cost, but for this presentation specifically, I wanted to focus on free activities and materials. So we will return to the Mentimeter um, link later. That's the um, kind of icebreaker I tried to do at the beginning, but for time, I'm going to come back to that at the end. If we run out of time, I will send everybody the word cloud. So the topics that I'm going to be talking about are composition and creation, uh, percussion and drumming, and then screencast tools. Um, I most likely will not talk about performances, but hopefully I'll be able to mention a little bit about it. But I really want to make sure that I get through uh, the first three topics. And um, I wanted to make sure also to let everyone know as, um, as we keep going through this presentation, every school district has different guidelines. So um, as far as technology and software is concerned, um, please check with your administration to see if these activities um, would be allowed in your school. Um, and also, the focus of this presentation isn't necessarily to link the standards to each activity, but there is always a way to link um, one of the standards to the activities. It's just not something I'm going to be mentioning today. All right, so the first activity is composition and creation. Um, this is all going to be digital based. And the first thing we're going to explore is Chrome Music Lab. Um, Chrome Music Lab is just not one program. There's multiple programs within the Chrome Music Lab website. But the one that we are going to uh, explore today is the um, song maker. And it's this guy here in the pink. And the activity that I'm going to share with you is from Katie Wardrobe's Midnight Music website. Um, she is an Australian music educator. She has a ton of free res resources on her website, as well as a free podcast. Um, if you have no experience in integrating technology in the elementary general music classroom, I would highly recommend that you just browse her website. So um, what lesson plan I'm going to share with you and we are going to quickly um, explore is Star Wars. And I used this with my students this spring when we were in remote learning. Um, they had never been introduced to the software before. So I had to provide written and video instructions, um, which I posted on a website that I created so that they can actually do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and actually show you the video that I created. Um, and this is Flipgrid Shorts. Uh, I used Flipgrid Shorts because it, it was, it's allowed in my school district. And this is the video I created for um, this activity. It's really cool. So without further ado, here is Chrome Music Lab. Uh, sound okay? Yeah, okay. All right. Happy Monday, ladies and gentlemen. Um, glad you can join us today for Music Monday. And um, I decided to add third through fifth grade and include some fun May the 4th be with you activities. So um, go ahead and explore the different links there that you see. This video, however, is for the last link that says Chrome Music Lab composition. And it's I just wanted to include a screencast just to walk you through the um, the program because we have not used it in class previously. So I've included two options on the instructions here. The first one is the option one beginner and then there's also an option two intermediate. Um, your choice and you can also do both. So first of all there's a link here that you're going to copy and paste and it's going to take you to this website here and I will go ahead and play what's on the screen. Thank you. 
so it just keeps looping um, back to the beginning. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to choose what instrument. And if you're looking on the screen here, you're going to choose what instrument you want the melody to be. So it was on marimba and you can choose strings. Let's try a woodwind. So that's this first button here. I'm going to go back to the marimba. So your first task is to choose what instrument's going to play the melody. Um, the second thing is the bottom two lines are percussion instruments. And when you click in the box, it plays either a high or a low sounding percussion instrument. So I'll just add some in. Let's see how it sounds. So I'll add, add, but if I thought I, ch if I change my mind, I can go ahead and erase it by clicking it again. All right. So um, for time's sake, I'm going to stop the recording because it's better if you actually um, experience this. And so the task is for five minutes, we're going to put you in breakout rooms of uh, about four people, randomly uh, chosen groups. And I will share this link in the uh, chat box. Um, it is the actual recording that you saw in the video. So it is just the melodic line. And your job is to add a percussion line to this song. If you would like to change the melody, you can change the melody. And an extra step is there's a Wakelet link here. Um, I would like you to save uh, what you created and then cut and paste that link here in this Wakelet because my goal is to collect everyone's work and create a virtual uh, performance or talent show um, to show you what you can do in an online setting. So when we go into breakout rooms, you should be able to share your screen. If you're not comfortable with doing that, just open the link yourself and work on it independently. But you have that group before to talk through the process if you need help. I'm, I'm hoping that makes sense. What I don't want you to do is I don't want you to spend all five minutes figuring out how to share your screen so that all of you can work on it together. However, if you know how to do that quickly, um, um, by all means, go for it. So it really depends on the group that you're in. So I'm going to stop share so I can type in the chat box um, this link and then Let's see here. So the music lab link is the link that you're going to work in. And then the wakelet link is the link that you're going to share. So and I'm going to try to cut and paste it now because once we get into breakout rooms, I'm not quite sure if you're, I'm going to be able to reach everyone. So there's two links there. Um, Let's see. Do I have capabilities, Rebecca, for the breakout rooms? Uh, if you're not seeing the button, I have breakout rooms. OK, I'll do it. Okay. So five minutes. I know some I know that was a short amount of time. <laughs> um, but if you were still trying to figure out how to share, um, when you click that wakelet link, um, take you to this screen and then you could add your names or a title. And then you would click edit collection. Click the plus sign. Paste the URL here, um, so you would, that's where you would click save in Chrome, uh, Google Chrome Music Lab, um, and then that would be it. So um, I apologize, I know it was really, really, really short, um, but I wanted to make sure that you got a chance to explore that. Um, and then let me just share with 
view my screen. Um, so this is the word wall that you all participated at the very beginning when I asked you to describe yourself in one word. Um, just something fun that you can use in your classroom. Um, you can use it in all sorts of different ways, but it's called uh, mentimeter.com and I'll include that in the resources after the presentation. Um, so I will um, continue with Google Chrome Music Lab very quickly. Um, there's other things that you can do with Google uh, Chrome Music Lab, uh, solfege and oral activities. You can talk about the different instrument families, a ton of other musical concepts. And um, again, I want to mention Katie Wardrobe. I've used her Spooky Sounds Garage Band project um, over Halloween. I know that's not non-LMS specific, but I wanted to mention that. She has a cool activity using a Staff Wars game to practice reading treble clef and bass clef notes. Um, and I've used both of those. The third one I have not used yet, but it looks super fun. It's called Rap My Name. Um, I encourage everyone to continue to explore. Um, the more you explore, the more you discover, and then the more you can share with um, your colleagues. So um, the next program I'm going to talk about is called Incredibox. Um, it is a beatbox creation using seven characters on the screen. Um, we are going to do a similar activity. And now that we're familiar with it, hopefully it's, um, it'll uh, go a little smoother. I'm going to show you one example that I created with my students. I used Incredibox in this example face to face um, and it was literally me calling on students to pick what color and what style beatbox they wanted to add to the composition. So this was the very first time they had seen it, um, but it can also be used in an asynchronous or synchronous way as well. Um, so let me find this creation. This is a fifth grade class. And the internet is very slow. Oh boy. sake I'm going to stop um, and we are going to again go into uh, breakout rooms hopefully with different people um, your goal in five minutes is to create a 30 to second uh, composition using Incredibox and it is the same share link on Wakelet um, so I'm not going to explain anymore because I just want you to jump in and use it. Um, and the web version, if I can remind everyone, is free. If you wanted to pay four or five dollars for the iOS version, um, that version is um, gives you more gives you more choices. Um, there's like seven or eight versions on the iOS, but on the website, you might only have access to like three. Um, so you have five minutes to create a 30 to second composition on Incredibox. It's similar to Google Chrome Music Lab where you can save the link. So you're going to copy and paste that link to the same Wakelet code. Um, so Rebecca, if we can go back into our breakout rooms. I'm going to quickly go through the next few things. Um, I told my supervisor at the food bank that I would be around the, there around 1130. So she understands that I have a webinar. <laughs> or Joanne. <laughs> so I can't tell if everyone's back. So just let me know. It looks like everyone's back. Okay. 
So I know this has been like a lightning speed of um, Chrome Music Lab and Incredibox, but you have the links now to explore. I just wanted to show you one more way that I've seen people use Incredibox. Unfortunately, I couldn't find an English version of somebody creating a rap over Incredibox, but I found somebody doing it in French. So here is an example of that. La classe commence et tout le monde est prêt. On doit parler seulement en français. Mais si quelqu'un parle en anglais, cette personne n'a pas de cœur. Et ça, c'est vrai. I have vrai. no idea what she's saying, but it was a good example of how you can have students create a beat and then wrap over it with whatever topic um, that you give them, whether it's how they're feeling, what they're doing for the summer, maybe cross-curricular, math facts, um, whatever the case may be. I made up a quick one um, the last couple days when I was putting this together. Um, I'm not well-versed in the whole um, rapping and hip-hop, but I gave it a try. And if anyone after this would like to create one on their own and send it to me to include in the virtual performance, um, definitely do that in that Wakelet link I gave you. So here's an example of what I came up with like in 30 seconds. I'm gonna back it up. I like the sun, I hate the rain, I love to play outside all day. So there's an example of how you can use um, Incredibox over a wrap. Um, let's see, I'm going to fast forward for time's sake and I am going to mention some additional resources. Um, I can't remember who was in the first group that I was with but they talked about how it would be cool if you could collaborate uh, online on the same composition because it was kind of hard with one person sharing their screen and controlling everything. Um, Soundtrap Education and BandLab Education um, both have platforms. They're like DAWs, um, Digital Audio Workstations. Um, I'm sure some of you are familiar with that. Um, Soundtrap does have a cost involved, but BandLab is free. Um, so if you're interested in um, doing something like collaboration, not just even within your with your own students, but they could collaborate with students like all over the world. Um, those are two resources. Um, Google Doodle is just a fun little website where you can create different sounds. I've already mentioned Midnight Music with Katie Wardrobe. And then I've included two on iOS that I've used personally, um, Sketch a Song with K through second grade and then GarageBand with third through fifth grade. Um, and I am a fan of Wake Wakelet um, because I use it with CWI. So I have a bunch of Wakelet links that I'm going to share with you to include this topic. Um, that's a picture of Sketch a Song. Um, and the last, uh, not the last thing, the second thing that I was going to talk about, but of course, um, this is the first time I've presented this, so it's uh, running out of time, um, is percussion and drumming. And I'm not going to share any of the videos because you have access to them after this. Um, but what I want to say is that if there's someone out there that has already created a video that you like and that you can use with your students, I would definitely uh, learn how to screencast yourself in there so that it could be something interactive. Um, so these are just some links that I found um, for drumming. Uh, more body percussion links. Um, I have watched a couple webinars of teachers around the world who have returned to their classrooms um, and they are facing the new reality, whether it's virtual school or physical distancing in a brick and mortar school. And a lot of them are turning to activities like body percussion. So I've included that here. Um, using cups, uh, building instruments, um, and then partner games. If you're familiar with music play and Denise Gagne, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, she's doing webinar Wednesdays and she has talked about how she's 
still teaching partner songs, but as the teacher, as the partner, and then the student can go home and try to find a partner and do an activity that way. Um, you can do a lot with percussion, add movement, um, create a composition, link with another teacher to uh, talk about uh, science, math, and STEM, and then you can add images. Um, I included some pictures of a drum facilitators workshop that I went to. The purpose of this activity was to um, pick one National Geographic photo and create a sound or movement to go with that photo. So it was kind of like a soundscape composition, but with multiple images. So that is my group there. Something you could definitely do online and uh, use whatever instruments or sounds that students can find at home. Uh, additional resources, uh, I would recommend, this is free, but the AMIS is basically like, take IMEA and all of us here in Idaho, AMIS is all of the international music educators um, doing sessions like this. They had one at 6 a.m. this morning. I caught the first 20 minutes of it. Um, and it was on elementary music ideas that you can implement. Um, I believe she interviewed like 11 teachers to discuss the types of things that they're doing. Um, uh, more resources. Keith Terry's doing some type of body music on Thursdays. I have not checked that out. And then finally, this is the last thing I'm going to talk about so that we can get to questions. Um, and I apologize, I'm going like 100 miles an hour, but uh, this is taking a lot longer than I thought it would. Um, I was not planning on talking about screencast tools, but I think it's really important, especially for those who have not, not had any experience using screencast tools to learn how to use one of them. They are all the same. Um, Screencastify, Screencast-O-Matic, Loom, Flipgrid Shorts, you can even use Zoom and PowerPoint. I created a, a wakelet with video tutorials. Choose one and roll with it. Um, not only for your lessons, but if you want to provide student feedback, um, if you need to show them how to do something, say you get a prescription for music, uh, music play online and they need help um, navigating the login process. Um, if you are online, screencast, screencast recording is going to be very, very helpful. Um, so as a summary, I have introduced you to a few different activities, very general. You can do it synchronously, which means what we're doing right now, face-to-face, -face, uh, not face-to-face, -face, but online real time. Uh, you can do it asynchronously like I did with the Chrome Music Lab with my students where they access it when they have time um, and complete the activities. And then I also tried to choose activities that you can use in your classrooms should we be allowed to go back um, respecting the physical distancing and um, without having to share any materials or instruments. Um, so I this is just a very brief snapshot of what you can do and I really hope and like Rebecca said this is like a platform for us to start to continue to share um, because I know there are some amazing educators out there that I have not met yet and I would love to hear some of the awesome things that you're doing. Um, so I'm going to fast forward because you will get a copy of this presentation. Um, I am going to um, continue to advocate for all of you to share locally and globally. Facebook, Twitter, you have your IMEAs. The Rocky Mountain chapter of Kodai and Orf are having some great webinar sessions. They just had one yesterday. Um, Amis, if you're interested in Seesaw, Amis has a recording about how to get started with Seesaw and use it in the elementary general music classroom. Um, second thing, learn your LMS. You must learn the ins and outs of your LMS to figure out how you can effecti effectively engage your students and stay connected with them. And then across the board from all of the webinars that I've been in, if we don't take care of ourselves, we can't take care of our students. So whatever you need to do amidst all this chaos, um, uh, learn how to balance that um, 
work and personal so that we can effectively do the same for our students. So um, there's going to be resources shared. Um, there's going to be a survey to gauge uh, how this webinar served you, as well as some future topics that we can possibly host through uh, State Department and IMEA. And uh, questions. Times for q and A. I'm going to stop sharing. Um, so let's see. So Joanne, somebody was asking about um, the men in Incredibox. Are they clothed or unclothed? And some are worried about Yes, that. so I've seen, so in the schools that I've taught at, I, I have not had issues, but I have seen teachers make up like a cute story, like, oh, they're, they're getting ready to go to the beach or something like that. Now, like I said at the beginning, it's completely up to your school and your site whether or not that would be appropriate. Um, I have heard a balance of yes and no, but trying to create something so that it's on neutral ground versus, oh my gosh, they're naked, um, is the way that I would present it. And we're all creative, so. So there's um, also, a, oh, the question about the headset. Yeah, so I, uh, like I mentioned, I got my master's in educational technology from Boise State. Um, I think I spent this headset is a USB um, headset. I literally spent $20 on it. And I asked my advisor, um, I know some of you might have been in the ed tech program, but um, Dr. Rice was one of my advisors. And I just asked, hey, what do you recommend? Because I had to teach um, online to get my endorsement. And this is the headset that she recommended. But you know what, I, I see a lot of teachers not teach with a headset, you can do it. But I think as far as noise cancellation and like clarity, it does help to have a USB headset. And I, I can look at my Amazon purchases and see this specific one and send that out as well. Oh, okay. Somebody asked LMS and I saw that Lori answered it. Um, so yeah, LMS is kind of where everything is stored and some districts have adopted certain LMSs and some haven't. Um, so a true LMS would have a place to store all your classroom materials and lesson plans. It would allow you to be able to grade. Um, it would uh, most LMSs have some type of discussion board set up. There's an argument whether or not Google Classroom is a true LMS. Um, I like Google Classroom, um, but I've also taught using Blackboard and Schoology and there's, they all kind of serve the same kind of function. It's just navigating each one is a little bit different. So I hope that helps as far as what LMS is. Did I miss any other questions? Um, if I could just, uh, oh, thank you, Rebecca, for linking the survey. If I can just say that, um, especially for those teachers, and, and I can relate because designing this online ES, uh, adult ESL course for CWI, talking to my supervisor, she explained that there are a lot of the teachers that teach uh, for us that are really afraid, um, quite literally afraid of trying to do any tech. Um, and really, you just kind of have to like, you just kind of have to do it. And I kind of relate it to um, our certifications. Most of us are certified K-12 music. And I don't know how many of you have left Idaho, but you might get stuck. Say, I grew up as a flute player and strings are not my strength. 
Well, in reality, we know with a K-12 certification, we can get stuck teaching an orchestra class. And just imagine how you're feeling, but we all overcome it because we know that we have, we're going to do what we need to do to teach that class. And so I look at online teaching in the same way, even though I have experience. But for those who don't feel comfortable with technology, you just got to jump into it. And that's kind of why I let you guys, I didn't give you so much instruction on Chrome Music Lab or um, Incredibox because I just wanted you to jump in and explore it. Um, and I hope for those of you um, who did that saw how simple it was um, and also realize that our students are going to help you um, K through five they're going to help you and you will be amazed at how much you'll you'll learn from students being able to guide you through the technology um, so I just want to throw that out there um, I put myself out here I've been wanting to present in person but I haven't been able to do that um, I served on my region board in California when I taught there. So I'm putting myself out here because I care about you all. We're all passionate um, music teachers. It's like a great community to be a part of. So if technology isn't your forte, I encourage you just to jump in there. Um, if you do feel comfortable with technology, I encourage you to start sharing with us um, in some way. Um, Rebecca and Kathy uh, and Shirley can probably brainstorm ways, but I feel like a lot of people are kind of freaking out about this new reality and I think we'll be okay. Um, so that's all I have to say, unless there's any other questions. I wish it were longer, sorry. <laughs> So I do have to piggyback and say, I, there's a lot of comments in the chat that they would like um, to do this over or stretch today's presentation out to have more opportunity to do this. And um, I just want to say that uh, if, you, if you can present or you're willing to present, please reach out to me and we will get it organized and ready to go. Um, I don't want to put it all on Joanne. I want other people to step up and step forward. And if you have other ideas, please let us know because we can do this really easily on this online platform. Um, so please make sure you take the survey. Please reach out to us if you would like to have more sessions and maybe some ideas of the sessions. And I just want to thank Joanne again for doing this. This is amazing and it gives us an idea of what to look forward to. And I know that I feel a lot um, calmer. And please reach out to us for anything that you need. Yes, um, I will get the link of the recording to Kathy and to Shirley, who will in turn pass it. And then I think if Joanne's fine with that, also a copy of the presentation. Okay, thank you so much, everybody. Please take the survey and reach out for help.